It's a very special day for us today because we have uh, an absolutely wonderful leader with us, uh, CVK as he is called by all his colleagues. And uh, we are now welcoming at this point the audience from YouTube. And I'm going to also now put the webinar live to start welcoming the audience into the webinar room. And, you know, th today is a very special feeling for us because I remember I met CVK many years back at that time the parent company of Soil, which was our consulting arm, Grow Talent Company Limited, was working with HCL to help in the leadership journey of the top 100 leaders. And I had the opportunity to meet CVK, and he struck me as somebody who was quiet, but very thoughtful. And that uh, stayed with me. And then a few years back, I went and met him in his offices in Noida, and that uh, aspect continued, that he asked questions. Uh, he was a very good listener. And I could see that uh, he was very, very, very intense kind of a leader. And that's what uh, CVK I've heard from so many people who work with you, uh, many of whom are uh, former students of soil and uh, who although may not directly work with you, but they talk about you as a leader who's really building the institution. So thank you very much for doing this for our CVK today. Yeah, thank you, Anil. It's, it's really a honor to be on this platform and I'm really looking forward to this conversations today. Thank you. And Surbi, thank you for being my co-host. You want to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. Thanks, Anil. Hi, everyone. Um, really happy to be here sharing the stage with CVK and Anil. A little bit about me. I graduated from Soil in 2013 and then started my career with Anil in his consulting team at Grow Talent Company. I think that possibly laid the strongest uh, foundation for my career. Thereafter, I was a part of Aon Hewitt, EY, um, as, as an HR consultant. And quite recently, I've moved to HSBC in their internal HR consulting team. Thank you. So, CBK, my first question, which is always my favorite question, when you go back to the journey of life that you were blessed to have received, uh, describe to us the early part of your life and what shaped you as a person. Tell us about your growing up years and what defined you. Uh, so I was born in uh, Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so uh, my parents were very hardworking and uh, like most other Indian children, the early days, the career childhood is all about education, right? Uh, they truly believed in uh, 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 ensuring all of us uh, got a good education and emphasized a lot on it. So my only remembrance of my childhood is about schools and education and how intense uh, uh, all of us were uh, focused on it. Uh, and uh, I, uh, after a few years, I went to a boarding school, Lawrence School of Dale. Uh, and uh, that has been a, that was a very good uh, uh, six or seven years where uh, uh, exposure to, uh, I mean, students from all over the country and it was a good ecosystem of what uh, India represents and uh, a great, uh, great learning experience uh, as a boarding school and a lot of discipline and a lot of uh, uh, focus on a multi, multi-dimensional kind of uh, uh, growth rather than just uh, education. I think all of that was very instrumental. And then I did my engineering from PSG Tech, uh, Coimbatore. Uh, I was really looking forward to spending some years with my parents and that four years really helped me because I was in the boarding school and those four years I was in Coimbatore and uh, so, it, and then after that I joined the CDOT. During the college days, I was very fascinated with the digital signal processing and uh, uh, CDOT was an upcoming organization, R&D organization. I think uh, Sam Petroda was also on your platform one of these days. 
Uh, he's such an inspiring person to listen to. And uh, uh, he was very instrumental in some early days from the professional career, uh, deriving a lot of motivation. Uh, then after that, I joined HCL in 1994. Uh, as uh, that time, HCL had won the National Stock Exchange uh, contract to really automate the whole stock exchange trading in the country. And HCL had the uh, responsibility to build the satellite communication network. I, I was part of the team. And uh, it's a very, uh, a lot of excitement because it was being done for the very first time. And stock trading was first automated. It was, uh, you could do trading from any part of the world. Uh, so it's a very pride moment on 3rd November, 1994, the stock exchange went live. Uh, and that memory is very vivid in the team that was uh, instrumental in executing that program. Uh, it was one of the happy moments. And then I played multiple roles in HCL. Uh, uh, for the longest time, I ran the delivery for infrastructure services, uh, then overall leading the infrastructure business. And uh, in 2016, I uh, was given the responsibility to be the CEO of the company. So the last four years have also been a, a very, very interesting journey. Uh, we've uh, been involved in uh, really transitioning and repositioning the company for the new new uh, model. So defining a strategy, executing to it, uh, all of that has been a, an amazing journey so far. Now, CVK, that uh, moment when you were told that you have been chosen as the CEO, uh, what was your own response to that? What did you feel? Uh, I think uh, first is, of course, uh, uh, you feel a tremendous sense of responsibility, right? I mean, you're always uh, comfortable uh, running one particular business and uh, you knew everything about that business uh, because you've been part and parcel of the growth of that business, which is the infrastructure business for us. So taking on a larger responsibility and being the visible face for the company, I think, uh, I mean, there is, I was very excited, I mean, obviously, uh, but I, more, more than excitement, I felt tremendous responsibility because I was going to be responsible for the, uh, the growth and the, I mean, ongoing success of the company. So, uh, which kind of puts a lot of uh, responsibility on your shoulders. And uh, it, that, that was the true, true feeling. Of course, I was very happy for everything that has happened. I was very thankful for, uh, for uh, the company to have given me the opportunity, Shiv specifically as a chairman of the company then. Uh, very thankful and uh, very humbled with the opportunity to lead HCL. Wonderful. Now, CVK, amongst all the things that you have done in HCL, what are some moments that stand out for you when you and your your team were at your personal best, something special that you did, which makes you even today really very happy when you think of those moments. What were those moments? Yeah. Anil, I was, uh, I was really fortunate to be part of a number of uh, firsts in HCL. And uh, uh, these were unique things being done for the very first time. Uh, so I was part of a team which was doing uh, these things, starting with the the National Stock Exchange Program was the first time we did it. It was a great moment of uh, happiness. The team uh, together, we were, all, we were all very, very elated when the project went live on a specific time. And it was being done for the first time uh, in the world to something like that. Uh, the second would be, I mean, if you look at um, the Indian IT industry, it was predominantly around software services. Developing software offshore was the bedrock of the Indian IT services industry. And HCL built this remote infrastructure management proposition, which was non-existent. Uh, so the team at Comnet uh, built this proposition and uh, really made it very, very significant. Today, it's a big part of the IT services segment is infrastructure management. So I think that's been one more very, very happy journey with the team, which conceptualized and built this proposition, scaled it to a global scale. And today we are one of the most respected players in the infrastructure business in the world. We are recognized for this by every analyst. So as a team, I think we are very proud. And I think uh, when you really achieve something of this nature as a team, I think it's a great moment to look for. 
And uh, in the recent uh, few years, uh, again, HCL did something different. Uh, while everybody was focused on services, we diversified into software products. Uh, this meant taking some uh, big bets. Uh, we did a big acquisition of uh, carving out a few products from IBM. We brought together a lot of our innovation talent, uh, building internal uh, uh, products around automation and AI and built a new division uh, by name products and platform, which is $1.2 billion in size today. Uh, I think this is again unique in the industry. Uh, it meant taking some risks, uh, but executing it very well to mitigate those risks and really creating a platform uh, to create a strong growth on the software product side uh, for HCL. I think I would call out these three as uh, something which stood out uh, from uh, everything else uh, was the first in the industry. And uh, obviously as a team, uh, we were all very happy with what we could accomplish here. And the journey continues, of course. You know, the impression I have of HCL right from my early days, when I remember once uh, Shiv and his team called me to facilitate a session of the leadership team that was being held in Kathmandu those days. Okay. And I had never seen a team so energetic and party so hard. I mean, I remember that night, these guys were like going till four o'clock in the morning, you know, and they said, Anil, come on, why are you getting off the dance floor? And, you know, these guys were really, so it was a very unusual company. I had not seen leaders enjoy working with each other so much. So high intensity, entrepreneurship, doing new things, and very enthusiastic and so those are my memories from the early days. And, you know, subsequently also when I felt, it's like challenging the status quo and, and always doing something for the first time and having the courage to do it. Now, where does all this come from? What has contributed to creating this kind of culture? Yeah, I mean, my own, uh, my own recollection of uh, HCL early days is, uh, of course, part work hard, party harder, right? I mean, there is tremendous team building that happens when you get together and... Uh, you celebrate a win or celebrate a milestone. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the energy comes, energy within HCL leaders come from empowerment. I think uh, as a company, uh, the DNA is uh, we want to challenge the status quo. We want to go against the tide and win, right? There are many situations where we would be a completely uh, last option to win a deal in a completely new area, new country but the leadership or the, the team which is leading it will take this as a challenge to, to really go and win it, right? I mean, to, in most markets, we win very well when we compete, but let's say when we were opening up uh, Sweden, the, the point that you mentioned, uh, I mean, the fact that we were no one and we built one of the biggest uh, business in Sweden over the last 10, 12 years, uh, it's just because there is a new, there's a lot of adrenaline that flows when we want to create something new and achieve something which has not been achieved before. And I think that's coming from empowerment. Uh, em leaders are empowered, the front end teams are very empowered and we back them up a lot. I mean, we encourage them to uh, go outside the comfort zone, I think is a very important element when you do all these things. For us to evolve, for individuals to evolve uh, and realize their full potential, and for the organization to evolve and realize its full potential, you should be constantly stepping out of your comfort zone, right? A little bit every, every moment, a little bit you're stepping out of your comfort zone, that paves way to the true evolution and maximizing or realizing your full potential. I think we always push the envelope on that, encourage people to step outside the comfort zone. We are willing to take bets on people to do new things, uh, give them that experience and exposure. Uh, I think that's what is unique about HCL. You know, the, I was talking to, in fact, uh, Sweden, because one of our uh, alumni from the very first batch, Rohit Kumar, in fact, he works as the sales director in your Sweden of, Swedish office. He's in Sweden. And it's very unusual. He stayed with you for 10 years. And that's another thing which is quite remarkable that these days when young people change jobs quite often, you managed to also retain your talent for a long period of time. Now, where does that come from? 
Yeah, we have uh, we have an amazing uh, leadership maturity. If you take the top uh, hundred managers, I think at least seventy five of them would have spent uh, almost twenty years with HCF. Right, wow. leadership stability. We do bring in new leaders, but a lot of them. Uh, uh, HCF truly believes in grooming internal leaders for new roles. I mean, whenever a position becomes available, we we push ourselves to find an internal person to take that role. Uh, and, and some completely new businesses, of course, we index talent from outside. Uh, but there's a lot of emphasis on uh, giving opportunities internally. I think that's what has kept a lot of people going. And I would not be surprised. There'll be many, many people uh, with 10 plus years. I mean, a lot of young people tend to move around a little bit more. But if you see HCL, I think that phenomenon, if, if someone has stayed on for three or four years, and they've started enjoying their work and they've settled down and they like the challenges, they go on for a very long time. I think it's the empowerment and the culture of entrepreneurship, challenging the status quo. All of that gives the motivation for people to look forward to every day. Yeah. Now in all this, uh, this wonderful story that you've had, uh, and before we also turn to looking at the recent situation that the world has faced, you know, there must have been some moments, uh, CVK, when you personally felt that things, these are what we call low points of your life, some extreme challenge, something which uh, you never expected. And uh, so what were those really difficult moments or challenges you faced and uh, how did you, how did you face those? We'd love to hear from you about that. Uh I mean, professionally, I think uh, generally we've all been very resilient, right? I mean, when when you when you really face a challenge, you feel tremendously motivated to do all the right things. And uh, I think uh, I've always become, I mean, I've become comfortable being uncomfortable. I mean, that's that's what I would say, right? And so I don't professionally, I don't find that. I mean, there could be real challenges, but uh, if you can approach it as a team. If you bring in the power of collective wisdom, uh, I, I, this is something I've always believed, right? Individual brilliance uh, can always be uh, good, but the power of collective wisdom is very, very important. And if you, as a leader, can harness the power of collective wisdom, no problem is insurmountable, right? Because people come up with ideas. If you can channel those ideas well and give it shape and empower them, I think it can be solved. So professionally, I wouldn't say that there was a low moment or I did feel, did not feel that. I felt as if I'm not going to be able to do something or we as a team could not achieve something. Personally, of course, I think uh, most vulnerabilities of people come on the personal side. And I think when I lost my father when I was 30 years old and my mother a few years back, I mean, uh, it was really low points. And I think you really feel a big void when you lose your parents uh, you you wish you spent more time with them and it, it's it's really a, a low point and I think the ecosystem the extended family friends all of them help us to recover uh, I mean my only advice will be to always maintain a good work-life balance because a lot of things in your personal life don't wait right and whether it's spending time with your children with your family or with your parents I think that's extremely important because these are moments which were not going to come back. Professionally, you can keep going on, uh, but uh, I mean, always pay a lot, lot of attention to whether you're balancing uh, your personal uh, uh, time well or not. I think that will be very important. Thank you, CVK. That's, uh, that's such a mature thing to say. You know, when I was uh, sending a message to our friends about your uh, you, uh, this is how I described you. I said you are a very quiet and humble leader, and that you truly build in, uh, you truly believe in building the the whole. You know. So, by the way, in the Indian uh, Sanskrit language, there is a word to describe this. It's called sthita pragna. Uh, the English translation of means equipoise. Okay. Okay. Somebody who is uh, very comfortable with herself or himself, and which is also the kind of practice of mindfulness that we talk about. 
and you know which is something we are trying to inculcate amongst our students in soil where we uh, we teach them you know this whole practice of mindfulness and equipoise to what extent do you think uh, organizations uh, like big global organizations to what extent do you think they would value something like this yeah it's uh, i mean what you're saying is uh, music to my ears i think uh, uh, mindfulness empathy compassion resilience these are the most valued attributes in today's world uh, there is so much happening across the world uh, i mean some things are positive some things are not so positive and uh, as individuals and as leaders as you manage teams and work with a lot of colleagues empathy is very very important you need to be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes for you to come up with the right solution uh, otherwise you are you uh, you are always operating in a vacuum right i think building empathy empathetic leaders and compassionate leaders uh, is extremely critical for global organizations to succeed uh, because uh, today uh, there is uh, I mean, when when you're looking at the 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 opportunities to grow your organization or uh, the business and things like that, there are numerous opportunities, numerous ideas, and a lot of in, a very creative and innovative people who can who can kind of bring all that to life and who can work hard. But I think the the uh, what really differentiates people who 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 are able to travel long journey in in professional careers and build. a uh, good teams and uh, accomplish some outstanding results i would strongly say empathy and compassion stands on the highest uh, levels of uh, capabilities you should have and i'm really glad you were uh, focusing on these attributes uh, i i'm not sure how it can be taught but i'm sure you have ways of uh, uh, inculcating this but the very fact that you are recognizing this as important aspects i think it's it's outstanding Thank you, CVK. Now let's turn to this uh, aspect, which almost everybody is talking about: that uh, this pandemic just hit us from nowhere. You know, even though Bill Gates had made a speech uh, some time back about uh, the fact that such a thing could occur, and uh, there are a few others also who had warned that there could be these black swan kind of events that take place. but the pandemic has really been extraordinarily painful in many ways to many people you know people have lost their near and dear ones i mean i have lost some of my friends who just disappeared suddenly and some family members as well and so a lot of people have had a lot of pain and a lot of industries and especially small companies have just collapsed right Yes. So in this uh, situation today, how are you reading this world as it is emerging, this new world order, and what are your own insights about what is emerging and what will be the future of organizations and the future of, you know, future of work? So we would love to hear your thoughts on that. Yes. Uh, so certainly, this has been a, a huge crisis, health crisis, economic crisis. humanitarian crisis whatever you want to call it and very sad that uh, the the way things have unfolded in the last uh, few months uh, but just stepping aside and looking looking forward uh, there are a few silver linings in this whole uh, journey that we have gone through uh, first and foremost i think uh, sustainability is becoming the centerpiece of everybody's thinking right uh, what we are doing is it sustainable uh, are we doing the right thing for the planet in the long run i think that has become very very important uh, in in not just uh, uh, organizations even a lot of uh, corporate leaders are thinking uh, much more intensely i know esg was a framework a lot of companies adopted but the intensity with which these thoughts are being uh, considered in a lot of our uh, discussions and strategies i think is very high which i think is going to be very good uh, for the world at large uh, in the in the long run whether it is uh, environment climate uh, corporate social responsibility uh, philanthropy all these aspects become has have become much more important 
the second aspect is uh, uh, i think technology is going to be very very important uh, in in most businesses uh, thriving and surviving and growing right so i think adoption of technology uh, is uh, is becoming very important uh, from a perspective that it's not about like some automation and a lot of jobs are lost but this whole concept of sustainable economy is going to create a lot more jobs uh, when i when we talk about automation ai while some of the monotonous work will get automated and those jobs will get eliminated but there will be enough jobs which will get which will get created which requires the creativity which takes uh, which really brings the best of human uh, uh, capabilities i think that's a long term evolution and i think that's going to be accelerating now uh, than ever before so this puts a lot of responsibility on all of us to make sure people are uh, continuously learning and learning and relearning uh, that's a very important aspect again because normally we are all used to us a few years of college school and college education and then you get into work and then you continue that forever but there needs to be a proactive a uh, very planned effort by everyone to keep themselves uh, abreast of everything that's happening so continuous learning has become has become so important and i think that will be good uh, for the world at large i would say thank you and cvk you know the, briefly we talked a few days back and you i was very struck by the way you responded and especially the way you you responded to this whole pandemic in the way you related to your own colleagues worldwide and all your very large workforce can you share something about how you led that and how did you also serve customers in response to this crisis yes uh, see we recognized uh, uh, the pandemic very early like uh, in january 25th or 26th we called out the internal crisis management uh, uh, process and from that day every week i mean initially it was twice a week and now it's every week uh, about 40 leaders across the company get together discuss all the issues on the ground uh, and we've created an empowered mechanism of local teams to take the right decisions uh, and i think it's again the power of collective wisdom truly playing out uh, which has helped us to deliver this uh, business uh, continuity a service to our clients and doing everything right for our employees uh, i think it's the two things one is of course our dna of being very employee centric and uh, the whole approach of power of collective wisdom both coming together i think we are, we are very happy with the way we have handled the the pandemic especially with respect to our people uh, very early in the cycle we said nobody is going to lose their job while in the first quarter everyone saw a huge decline in revenue including us but we we went ahead and told the people that we're all in it together nobody is going to lose their jobs we will recover from this so giving that confidence i think helped teams to remain focused on what they need to do for their clients uh, the second is also doing everything possible enabling them from work from home and all that is pretty basic but uh, relating to not just their physical well-being but emotional well-being connecting with every every individual at a certain periodicity uh, we had an incident where uh, one person uh, who was working in one of the main cities had gone to uh, a remote place in orissa and uh, when we developed some symptoms uh, he didn't get access to the uh, the the right uh, medical attention and very unfortunate that he passed away uh, so from that day what we have done is every week we reach out to all the 110000 employees in india so there is a 3000 people volunteer team who reach out every week and uh, just making sure because everybody is in very remote corner somebody may have help somebody may not give priority to what symptoms he is facing so we reached out and i think uh, that's uh, hugely helped and i'm sure the people feel so much more connected to the organization uh, i mean we were doing that through various other means but sometimes these messages don't reach and people don't take it so seriously 
so we really made sure there is a human personal conversation with every individual every week i think that's definitely uh, i feel very good that we did that i'm sure it has helped a lot of uh, our employees and their families uh, and at the end of the day uh, how i mean we we live true to our values of being employee first and very focused on doing everything right for our employees and uh, without any surprise that has helped us deliver an extraordinary outcome for our clients so how very nice and i also know that uh, you always as an organization also think about the larger well being of the community itself because i think uh, uh, you and your founders are at the forefront of uh, philanthropy in this country and i think that's something quite remarkable that uh, for an organization to practice so thank you for that uh, role modeling as well so at this stage uh, uh, now it's my a request to get surbi to become the host for the next 30 minutes she is going to ask a question of her own and then also she will read out the question in the chat box and then the q and a box so over to you surbi thanks anil uh, see we have wonderful listening to you for the past 30 minutes a question that comes to my mind is uh, you've had such a glorious career so far and i'm sure that will be the case in the future but what legacy would you like to leave for the future generation of leaders i think uh, the answer is very very simple i think uh, if i can be an example of uh, a caring and compassionate leader uh, i will be uh, most happy about it and uh, i mean business success and all of that uh, can only be secondary uh, i really want to uh, leave that kind of uh, impression and uh, that's being true to myself i would say thank you thank you so much we have a question from uh, hariharan sita raman uh, very candidly he he wants to ask you what gives you sleepless nights currently yeah see when i was traveling 150 days in a year and traversing different time zones sleeping was difficult but uh, these days uh, i haven't traveled i've lived in one time zone for almost a year so i sleep well uh, i would not say things give me some sleepless nights but uh, some of the some of the concerns top of the mind uh, concerns would be uh, about uh, i mean of course the industry has a lot of people working on traditional areas now uh, sometimes we see some resistance in them trying to redefine relearn and uh, reinvent themselves and uh, that leads to them becoming redundant and they cannot have a meaningful career opportunity i think that's that's one thing which bothers me because if people don't take that self i mean organizations can do a few things to enable people to get trained or give them exposure but i think eventually it's the individual who has the biggest responsibility to take uh, advantage of those opportunities and relearn and recreate himself in line with the changing changing uh, technology landscape uh, so i i think that's one thing which uh, i'm always uh, concerned about because after you reach a certain uh, if you're 40 45 50 and if you've just been in one area which is not going to be relevant for the future Uh, then you become less and less relevant in the in the overall uh, outcomes that you can deliver so i would i always encourage people to find ways uh, motivate yourself to do something new learn something new which keeps you abreast of technology and all the business uh, cycles that are changing sure sure thank you and um, rr nayar um, Anil, I believe uh, he is he's the coach, executive coach. Yes, and a former uh, Unilever, former former Unilever board member and a dear friend. Yeah, continue. Yeah. So, uh, Arun Nayar wants to you know wants to know from you. Uh, you may already be thinking about a disciplined post crisis review. What, according to you, should be the key elements of such a post crisis review? i think this i mean knowing that this has been a humanitarian crisis how do your employees uh, feel about everything that you have done right it's not at the moment of crisis but 
some of the things that we have done or we have not done leaves a very strong uh, uh, feeling or perception with with our people i think uh, every organization should measure itself on that metric and i know not every organization is uh, fortunate enough to be able to take care of their employees uh, because some businesses have vanished overnight and we do recognize that but even in that situation i mean have you demonstrated a a sense of compassion and empathy when you're dealing with whatever came your way i think that was very important and i think that could be the critical review of how all of us have done uh, at the end of this uh, crisis sure sure thank you and uh, we have a few people asking this uh, one of them is pulkit nagpal so he wants to know that post pandemic if there is ever a post covid world what do you think should be the uh, what do you think should be the ways of working is is working from home going to be sustainable yeah i think uh, working from home is uh, is definitely sustainable but not at this scale where pretty much everybody is working from home uh, i think the eventual model will be what i call as the hybrid model Uh, where uh, i mean some percentage of our employees come to work some work from home and they take turns i think that's going to be the model uh, i think what is really missing in today's uh, environment is uh, i think our ability to build a little bit of social capital is uh, missing uh, in most organizations the people who are working today are have been working for a long time or they were at least interacted with some of the uh, colleagues uh, in the past more physically but when time passes maybe 10 15% of your organization will be completely new who have never interacted or physically felt what uh, hcl is or what any other organization is i think that is the time when we will start thinking about what's going to happen to the culture of the organization can we build the same passion and energy and uh, innovation all of that in the remote model Uh, i doubt it i mean i strongly feel getting people back to work uh, meeting them relating to them building that social capital motivation all of that is very very important for the culture of any organization to sustain and uh, evolve uh, so from that perspective a hybrid operating model is what i envision uh, in the post pandemic world sure thank you um sneha yadav says um so you are an inspiration and role model to many i want to know who are your role models or mentors yeah uh, i think i've been very fortunate to to work with a lot of people uh, i think if you take uh, my early days uh, in comnet i would say i mean every manager that i worked with uh, have left a good uh, uh impression on me they've helped me to kind of uh, shape uh, of course uh, uh, vinith's approach of employee first has helped a lot of leaders in the industry kind of uh, i mean while i am intrinsically a very uh, very focused on people and things like that but that whole philosophy gets ingrained in the way you operate i think uh, i mean vinith has been very instrumental in a lot of us kind of imbibing that quality to move forward uh shiv has been a great uh, uh philosopher and guide for me i mean he's given so much of good advice and leading from the heart is just one thing which he always says uh, i mean while a lot of professionals uh, tend to analyze a lot and you you put your mind to work but uh, you have to bring your heart into some of the decision making and that will be very important and i think if you see that is embedded in the organization right i mean the philosophy of uh, shiv and his value systems is is really a part of the dna of hcl over the last many years and uh, his ability to uh, uh, allow people to take risk and back them fully i think that also helps you to excel when you take on business challenges uh, it it really helps you because you you know someone is really backing you and so i've really been very fortunate to have uh, been associated with uh, several good leaders 
and uh, my own family i i think they have been a big inspiration for me i mean my parents they were very hard working they gave me all the right value systems uh, my sisters they have extended family my own my wife my daughter all of them i think in some way have contributed to uh, who i am uh, so i am very thankful for all that wonderful i want to read out a question surbi of shanta raju shanta is chairman of ramki group and earlier ceo for indus towers and uh, dear friend he asked that no organization is perfect if there is one thing you want to change in hcl to ensure organization stays fit and sustainable what would you like to change in hcl shanta is asking yeah i would uh, candidly admit we are far from perfect there are lots of areas to 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 focus on and fix i mean if you see the last 4 5 years our business has evolved and become much more complex than uh, what it was about 5 years back covered I mean, our presence in geographies number of businesses that we are into a client base employee base all of that is significantly changed i think we will need to continue to improve our internal systems and processes uh it's a big work in progress you are never you you can you can never say i'm finished I, but i think we have some big uh, big steps to cover there uh, and i think that's one thing which we are focused on to to improve go ahead sorbi sure thank you uh so minakshi gupta wants to know what level of involvement do you think technology will have in the education system in the next 5 years i think it's going to be quite profound right i mean to have quality education available to a very large section of the society students i think technology can play a very big role and i think we have big dearth of uh, teachers uh, technology can really bridge that gap uh, in a, in a big way uh, but i don't think it can substitute a, a school experience or or a physical interaction experience so i envisage it becoming a, a, again a hybrid where you can learn a lot of things remotely but you will you should come into a school or some kind of a physical setup uh, to to interact or to kind of uh, ask questions and kind of uh, some experiential learning comes through that uh, process i think if we can combine both technology and the the current format of education well i think it will be very helpful sure we have a question from uh, mahesh uh, limaye who seems to be a fan and he says that what do you do to stay cool and calm what, what is your mantra <laughs> i've i've done a few things like uh, i mean i used to practice art of living i used to do a little bit of meditation Uh, yoga and things like that but nothing is sustained as a hobby for a long term i think uh, they in the last few years uh, i've been quite overwhelmed with all what i had to do so i've kind of lost interest in some of the hobbies but i mean once in a while just spending some time reading a book or taking a long walk kind of provides that uh, i mean refreshment in your uh, in your in yourself uh, that's what i would say sure a question from me uh, what is uh, that one development area in yourself uh, you know which you had to overcome to become the best version of yourself i think that's a, there's a lot of work in progress i think i i'm nowhere near being the best version of myself i think uh, uh, i do think i have to communicate a lot more than what i do and uh, that's a important aspect i constantly attempt but uh, i do think uh, there is some some more miles to cover there communicate more uh, with with the teams and people uh, not just by virtual means but more uh, more uh, uh, real and physical uh, opportunities to interact and engage with the teams it becomes very difficult as the organization grows bigger uh, some of these things become difficult Uh, Surbi uh, Karthik is asking a question in the chat box about HCL plans for Vietnam. Would you read out that question, please? Sure, sure. So Karthik Malhotra wants to know: 
um i just came across an article that hcl is setting up its plan in vietnam so can you share a bit about it and what are your plans of growth over there yeah, karthik is a student of our new campus yeah that's right yes sure, sure that's a nice question i think you probably might have seen a press release just today uh, i mean we are expanding into a couple of countries so one of them is sri lanka the second one is vietnam uh, we believe uh, Uh, there is good skills and good talent base and uh, uh, so some of the delivery can happen from these locations for some of the services especially for the lot of engineering services to be delivered to to the asian market asia and japan we think vietnam can be a very good hub uh, to build those capabilities and deliver uh, so we plan to really grow that ecosystem we think we will grow to about 3000 people uh, in vietnam in the next 2 uh, to 3 years uh, and we do have bigger plans but right now at least next 3 years we see a, a good uh, healthy build up up to 3000 people largely focused on engineering services sure sure thank you and vivek uh, punekar wants to know how do you see the india business and what are your plans for the india growth especially hindustan because he is remembering the old name of hcl hindustan computers limited because vivek has worked for 30 years in hcl yes yes, yes. that's right thank you vivek and nice uh, nice talking to you though i am not able to see you today i am sure i will talk to you uh, one to one some other time uh, india i mean to be candid uh, hcl has focused very less on india business uh, due to various challenges uh, that we've seen in the past uh, several years but uh, we think india is at an inflection point from a technology spend and adoption of technology in almost every area uh, so we think there are some good opportunities uh, more on the product uh, uh, services product business is where we think there are there are good opportunities for us to invest and scale uh, so you will see us uh, uh, coming up with some more uh, aggressive plans for india in the years to come Uh, in the past we've had a good focus but we we i mean consciously defocused on some segments in india uh, but uh, now we have plans to refocus on india as a as a market uh, so be in the q and a box devduti's question and shavastika paul's question yeah devduti sen sure so devduti sen gupta would like to know um the pandemic has forced a lot of change in how organizations work so what according to you are the key skills required to sustain in the industry and how different is it from the pre covid times i think the fundamentally from a technology skill perspective uh understanding some of the new technologies new ways of working uh, simple things like uh, i mean agile development processes is is a very important aspect in software development cloud adoption is a very very big theme uh, in uh, in several industries uh, so security cyber security is becoming uh, a very big focus area for a lot of uh, customers uh, analytics big data ai so these are some of the areas uh, where uh, there is going to be a lot more demand a lot more expectation so i mean building your skills in any of these areas uh, and becoming an expert i think will be a great uh, way to uh, uh, secure your career in the post pandemic world it's not that they are uh, they were not there pre pandemic i mean of course the the intensity and the acceleration is going to be a lot more uh, uh, now than in the past since some of these uh, webinar attendees are students from both our campuses uh, both the one who do the intense one year program and also the two years program which is based on design thinking the question that is being also sometimes asked by our students is to what extent should they learn also the technology because they are here to do an mba and some of them have a technology background before they came to do an mba or to what extent should they go deeper into the understanding of technology even in a business school and this is a question especially on the digital side and yeah. also in the, all this big data and analytics side i think uh, yeah it's a very very good question i do believe uh, uh, 
technology is the business. So you cannot uh, ignore technology and really become a great uh, uh, business manager, whether, whether you're in a financial services or in tech sector or any, any segment, I think appreciation and understanding of technology is very, very important. And to that extent, uh, if you already have a technical background, uh, make sure you keep that uh, uh, updated and uh, I mean, you keep your interests alive on every technology area where you had some prior experience. I think that'll help you. It'll really become a catalyst for you to deliver more, appreciate more of what's happening in the business landscape, uh, which will help you to become a better professional and uh, help you deliver more. Yeah. Um, Shwastika Paul, um, you know, she, she comments that I've heard you deeply invested in promoting sustainable business practices in the communities where HCL operates in, with an emphasis on advancing STEM for the youth specifically. And could you throw some light on the initiatives? Yeah. Okay, that we, we do a few things in different parts of the world, in, in India especially, uh, as a part of HCL Foundation, uh, we, we do several uh, initiatives around education. One of them is to reach out to the rural uh, uh, youth and the children. And uh, uh, some of the HCL uh, employees volunteer to spend a certain number of hours and days uh, with the youth to kind of help them appreciate uh, some of the newer technologies. Uh, and what the opportunities are and giving them some kind of guidance and coaching. I think that's uh, in, in different parts of the globe, we have been, uh, we've been working with schools to, to kind of popularize STEM and invest in some of the organizations to, to develop some of the uh, uh, more work oriented curriculum uh, to, to, to ensure that the students have a good exposure to what work life will look like what kind of skills do they need to be really succeeding and really creating the bridge between this, uh, the college or schools to, to work environment. I think that's where we have spent a lot of time and energy investing in, uh, both from a CSR perspective and as a corporate uh, involvement as a business strategy. Sure. And Shivani Bhatnagar wants to know, what is your advice to budding managers and leaders of today? Um, I mean, my leadership uh, mantra would be, I mean, I think principle-centered leadership is very, very important, right? If you can focus on uh, uh, principle-centered leadership, uh, I think you will go a long way, right? There are no shortcuts to success. You have to, you have, to have strong values, uh, principles. Uh, and when you work with teams, I think there are two things which is important. Uh, I think you need to create a very trusted environment. Uh, so, uh, and you need to create an environment of accountability within your teams. I think when you create a trusted environment and create accountability, then uh, you can execute much faster. You don't need to double guess each other. Uh, and uh, the outcomes will be very good. And when I say accountability, it's not about performance. We need to pay a lot of premium to consistent performance, right? I think a lot of people tend to do very well uh, for some period of time, but they, they go down, go up. But if you can, as a leader, put a lot of emphasis on consistent performance, I think that will create a great uh, uh, culture in your organization of meritocracy and accountability. And... Uh, and also create a very trust-based operating model where uh, you, your teams uh, feel very comfortable that they're trusted, they can come up with their ideas or they can differ with you. I think that's a very important uh, dimension, right? You should be comfortable with uh, people in your teams having a very different opinion. I think uh, that will help you to uh, think a little more balanced way. Uh, I mean, instead of just thinking in one direction. Uh, I think these are some some uh, leadership tips that I can share. Rohit Agarwal's question, he is a soil alum and also working with HCL. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just looking at the... Yeah, he's asking, what are your top three mantras that one should work or focus on to become the best version of yourself? 
you already talked about one, but are there any yeah. two more? Yeah, I, I think I'll try and kind of simplify this with three messages. One is, of course, lifelong learning. Uh, you need to be a continuous learner. Uh, and this needs to be more purposeful, proactive steps to be a lifelong learner. Uh, that's number one. Uh, second is believe in yourself, right? I think there is something in you uh, which is uh, unique, right? You have some unique capabilities and do the best out of whatever is given to you, right? And don't you need not be worried about what you're going to do in 10 years and five years, uh, but you've been given an assignment. Uh, how can you do the best uh, outcome in that assignment? I think every time you are focused on doing your best of what is given to you, uh, I will be very surprised if your uh, contribution is not noticed in any organization or in any setup. Uh, you will be given more challenging assignments and you should do that to your best possible. Uh, uh, I mean, doing, doing the best in the present moment, I think is, is the true, uh, I mean, that's, that's what we can all control, right? Future has got so many variables. Luck plays a very important factor in what you get. So I think what is in your control is to do the best in the current moment of what is given to you. And, uh, and the third is again, a very good uh, learning. Uh, I will say this uh, with, a, with a small uh, story. Uh, uh, in, the, I mean, in the last World Economic Forum, um, one of the sessions, uh, I had the good uh, fortune of uh, meeting uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, Kailash uh, Satyarthi. He had come into our pavilion and he was talking about it and he narrated a story uh, which was uh, which is very impressionable and it, it stayed with me from the time I heard. Uh, uh, he was uh, he did say this in his Nobel Peace Prize acceptance uh, speech. Uh, so there was a there was a big forest fire, right? And all the animals were uh, running away from the forest. Even the king of forest, the lion, was running away, uh, and. Uh, asking everybody to run away. And there was a hummingbird which was flying into the fire and the lion was saying, what are you doing? You will get killed and all that. The hummingbird said, uh, uh, showing a, a small droplet of water in its beak uh, saying, I'm going to put out the fire. And the lion said, are you joking? How can you do that? And uh, the bird flew into the fire. Uh, I mean, adamantly, I will do my best, right? So I think uh, there is a hummingbird in every one of us, right? Your ability, I mean, discover the hummingbird within you. I think that's, that's the real uh, uh, challenge. And then you do your best to contribute to everything that's going on. Uh, I would just leave it with these three thoughts. Yeah, Neveda's question, Surbi. Neveda, who's our student here. Yes. In the Q&A box. So, um... Niveda says, um, HCL's agility in terms of being first in the industry has always been inspiring. How is HCL embracing disruptive innovation in terms of creating new business or business models? And do you believe in automation of knowledge work? And if yes, uh, will it in any way affect the practice of employees first? Uh I think innovation uh, in HCL has been democratized, right? Innovation, uh, I think we, we pride ourselves in what we call as grassroots innovation. Uh, everyone who's working for a client or working on any program can put in their ideas in a portal called as value portal that gets evaluated by a set of subject matter experts uh, who uh, either get the idea gets implemented for our clients. There is a certain financial value that gets delivered uh, uh, for our clients, which we measure, uh, we reward our teams, we celebrate uh, value creation. So it's more of an organizational uh, 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 focus and uh, drive uh, to really kind of create uh, ideas. And some of the ideas has created some very good uh, businesses uh, within HCL over the last many years. Uh, talking about automation, uh, I think a lot of knowledge work can get, uh, are getting automated already. Uh, so that's something which is anyway going to happen. Uh, but I think there is for more automation, more AI usage, uh, there is enough work that's going to happen in uh, either creating AI algorithms, analytics, or 
uh, what is called as explainable AI, right? I mean, if if you're applying for a loan and the uh, the application looks at all the data and automatically decides you are not eligible for a loan, I mean, there has to be some traceability. Why is it happened? How can you explain the decision taken by a machine uh, on 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 something like uh, approving a loan. I think that explainable AI is a space where there is a lot of uh, lot of uh, work that can get created, a lot of uh, employment that can get created. And even robotics and all others, in my view, while it simplifies and uh, reduces a lot of manual work, but it does give a lot of opportunity for people to uh, use empathy, creativity, innovation, all those skills which cannot be... Uh, done by machines. I think that's where the emphasis is going to be. And I truly believe uh, we will continue to be an employee first and very employee centric organization. I have no doubts on that. Wonderful. So Surbhi, would you like to now share in a few words your response to this evening before I sum up the evening, Surbhi? Sure. Thanks, Anil. Um, thank you, CVK. It was a really enriching session for me and I'm sure for everybody who attended. While all what you said uh, is a learning for me, I think what really stood out was when you said that you have become very comfortable in being uncomfortable. And I think that's something that I really want to imbibe. And I would encourage future leaders to really um, personalize that and imbibe that because um, we don't know what the future would be, but for sure it is uncertain and ambiguous. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to take away. Thank you. Uh, CVK, what a treat to be in your presence today. You reminded us that the rock solid character that we have, the values imbibed by our parents and all the wonderful upbringing and education that we receive, that helps us to stay focused. That provides that character, gives us the capacity to do all the hard work which helps us to reach to greater heights. You reminded us, and that's what you live every day, when you, I, I really loved your answer about your legacy. You want to be remembered as the most compassionate and kind person because that is much more, that's the real wealth a person has. The other wealth may disappear, but this wealth stays. It's that compassion that gives you the resilience and the strength to overcome any particular challenge. And the wisdom of crowds that you talked about, which comes out of the building a connection with people. Lastly, you said, be a lifelong learner. If you can only learn how to learn, and if you passionately keep learning, the leader will be discovered in yourself. Leadership will happen to you. So hard work to take you to heights, compassion to source resilience, and learning to become a leader, HCL. That's the acronym for HCL. Yeah. So yeah. What, a, what a treat to be with you this evening, and thank you for giving us this gift of your time. Yeah, thank you, Surabhi. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you, Anil. And I continue to admire all the great work that you and Soil are doing. Uh, thank you for that. And... Uh, I really enjoyed this session and be Thank safe. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sumike. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.